Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now, providing a better future to our children is top priority for most parents, and that involves huge expenses. And but there are, you know, a lot of uh, investment instruments, investment plans available out there in the market to cater to that specific need. But the problem is that with so many of them out there, how do you choose? How do you choose the one best suited to your needs? Well, I'd say you, we've got you covered. Don't you worry. Watch today's episode. We'll answer all those queries and a lot more. Stay tuned. Uh, before I start talking about uh, child-specific plans for from insurance companies, it's important to understand that. Uh, just calling an investment product as meant for child or a children plan does not make it any special. You invest with an intention of investing for your child for a specific goal, for his education, depending on number of years, and you are unlikely to touch that investment. Even if you touch that investment, you will make changes moving from one investment to another because it was not doing well or you have found a superior option. But if you have targeted an allocation for your child or your children and uh, if you don't you know, uh, touch that money and if it is, you, it is for a specific objective, uh, that is your child plan. Whether it, you call it a child plan or whether it is being called a child plan. So first and foremost, the most important thing is that be clear. At least I want value research users to be smarter and understand that it does not, you know, there is nothing special about this uh, children plan and any investment could be a children plan if you, if you are doing it with that intention and you are disciplined enough to uh, follow it through and you know, don't fiddle with that. Broadly, there are two kinds of insurance policies sold by insurance companies. One is uh, one which actually makes a promise of uh, some return and the other one which is market linked and either of it is not suitable. It is undesirable for you to be taking a child plan, children plan from an insurance company. That doesn't mean that you don't need insurance. When you mix insurance and investment, you don't get the best of either and uh, both of them are very important goals for you. Insurance is more important than the investment. And in investment is also very crucial because it must work hard for this important goal of, you know, investing for child's education. And uh, because it is a long-term investment, you should not be getting any nasty surprises because if your investments don't do well, uh, you will be disappointed. You will not be able to meet your goals. And you are going to get surprises on the, on the cost front. The cost of education is rising and it has been fastest growing expense in an individual's uh, account in the last 10-15 years. It is going, it, going to be dramatically different and uh, it is better to you know, have the more than enough resources to take care of the education because for us it is a priority and it is not a negotiable goal. I think you know, the, every investor, if any, any parent needs an insurance, the moment you have dependent children, you should have adequate inf insurance so that your dependent family, financially dependent family can be taken care of just in case you are not around. And the moment you have a child, you should increase the amount of money that you require, uh, the insurance coverage that you require. Maybe if, if it amounts to buying a additional term insurance and that will not cost you much. It is a very important, uh, you know, safety net which you can create for your family. And uh, it is wise to actually have uh, multiple term insurance policies linked to specific goals. If you have a dependent child, then have a 50 lakh rupees term insurance for which the premium could be very nominal if you are buying it at, in your early stages of your life. And uh, in 10, 12 years time, uh, when, when he is, you know, through, through with his education, look at it as a cost. Look at it as a cost of, uh, you know, having a fallback just in case you are not around. But don't look at it as an investment. And that's the way to, you should be approaching insurance. No, like life insurance companies plans, uh, even mutual funds, ch children plan have, there is nothing special about them. 
and there's nothing special rather there is a there is a constraint one is that most children plan come with a five year lock in period or there is an exit load if you if you uh, make a choice and you want to change your you know change your mind or you think it is not a good enough choice and if you want to make some changes then there is an exit load so you have to be a little careful there is nothing special about this and most of them are either equity fund or grow or you know a hybrid fund which is uh, dominantly fixed income or dominantly equity so uh, there is nothing special about it in fact the whole universe of mutual fund is available option for you for as a for, as a child plan if you choose to and they have grip they, they offer greater flexibility and greater choice of performance Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana is a great option, is a great fixed income option. It is the highest yielding fixed income option available to Indian investors, 7.6% guaranteed. Uh, this is not a very old scheme and this was done, this scheme was created by government of India to incentivize making or saving for your girl child and to encourage that. So in that sense, it is a it's the best fixed income option available to investors save in wanting to invest for your child. There is something very unfavorable with this one, this option. Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana may not be a very wise thing for anybody, because uh, if you are investing for 10-15 years, if you are investing, if you are starting to invest for your newborn child or five-year-old child for next 10-12 years. you will get the guaranteed highest possible fixed income return from sukanya samriddhi yojana which is 7.6% but you are missing there is a great opportunity cost my understanding is that the not so great equity fund if you are if you are very good at choosing a below average performing equity fund still you will make more return generate more return than sukanya samriddhi yojana so uh, sukanya samriddhi yojana is a good scheme but it is not a appropriate scheme if you are investing for 10 years and more treat it like just another investment and uh, follow the same principle that and the principle is that uh, we should be choosing our investment depending on the investment time the time frame that we have if you are investing for a very young child and uh, this investment is going to be 10 15 years then for the first 5 year just invest all your money into a good equity fund keep doing that once that accumulation is something meaningful then maybe move 20% of that money into fixed income and keep rebalancing it you will start deriving benefit of it and you will also get little assured that a small part of the money is getting into fixed income which is relatively more stable and uh, carry on only when you are likely to need the money when the child is likely to get into the college and you are likely to need that money and a meaningful amount then the first year college fee take that money out and move into fixed income or your bank account four years before you need it so that at the last day at the last time you are not dependent on the market to achieve your goal you sh- you cannot be dependent on the market all your money cannot be in the market before you need the money uh, for such a important goal so uh take the money that you know three start preparing for it start the withdrawal uh two three years before you need the money well that's it in today's episode keep watching this space for more information if you like the show to subscribe to our youtube channel take care bye for now